Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Just before I invite our esteemed panel and our partner NGO to have a wider conversation, I wanted to throw some numbers at all of you just to understand where we are. Nearly 50% of the women in country like ours still use a rug, a cloth, or a hay instead of a sanitary pad, which is the reason why you see so many health issues happening in a woman during her life. Plan International, which is a leading NGO that caters to the child health care, reports that over 64% of girls in India do not feel comfortable having a conversation around periods with their family because of social stigma, which is so strange because on one hand, we're living in a world which has this talk and noise around creating a safe space. And on the other hand, you have statistics like this. So clearly there's a gap. Over 70% of adolescent girls, which is the age bracket between 10 to 19, have absolutely no idea about what menstruation is and what periods are until they hit their first period. And we're living in the 21st century, guys. So we need a conversation and we need a conversation that engages the, the wider community. And I'm so happy that I am joined in this one of a kind talk show by um, my Adobe colleagues and Mr. Arun from Pinkish Foundation. So I'm very, very happy to introduce you to um, Tanya Kapila, Radhika Shah, Chaitra, Abhishek Kare, Rohan Kamat, Mukta Roy, Poonam Singhal. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining in. And I am also, we also have amongst us a man who's been championing the cause towards ending period poverty for the good past or the good part of last eight to nine years. Thank you, a warm welcome to you. Uh, Thank you so much for, for joining our talk show. We're very excited to have you with us. Uh, thank you, Mank, and thank you, the whole Adobe team. Thank you very much uh, for doing this. Uh, when people from the corporate world come forward and talk about a start conversation around a subject which is not talked about, I think that's a great, great, great step. Uh, I look forward to a very meaningful discussion. Uh, very eager to hear everybody's experiences and voices and thoughts and everything. And I'm really, really glad to participate. Thank you so much for doing this. Pleasure's all ours. Okay, wonderful. So Arun, we can, we can probably start with you first. So I'll put you on the spot. To a lot of people who you know, will be going through this and who are listening to us, tell us a little bit about how Pinkish started. What was your inspiration and, and that trigger moment that you decided to, to start uh, Pinkish? Pinkish is a young organization. We are seven years old, Mank. Uh, and I have spent a lot of years myself in the IT industry, in the IBMs and the Dells of the world, uh, in and out of India, a few years outside India, a lot of years in India. Uh, uh, and in 2017, uh, my elder daughter, I have two daughters, was 17 at the point in time. And it just happened that she noticed a blood stain on the dress of our household help's daughter who came that day. Uh, and when she went to her, she, she was horrified to find that she was not wearing a sanitary pad and came to me. I said, that's a normal thing. It's uh, India, 70% of women do not still use sanitary pads. The little girl was kind of not uh, happy with that. She did some research and kind of pushed me, cajoled me, begged. And she said, why don't we start work on this? And that's how Pinkish started. We started with two people. Uh, very soon, we were a community of 200,000 women. Uh, and in seven years, we have been kind of working on one single cause, making periods talk uh, common, normalized, ending period poverty. That's what we are doing. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Arun. Um, it takes me back to a time where... 10 years, you know, you said seven years, so seven to eight years back, when it was still so difficult to even think about having a, a chat or a conversation. So clearly, when you started this, you know, you had a mountain maybe in front of you. And now all of those efforts that you and your team have put in um, have resulted in, I think, a space and an environment where people at least, you know, start having those minimal conversations. It's not there. We're not fully there yet, which is why a lot of work needs to be done. 
But I think the most important step in this journey is the first step, you know, which we've taken from a pinkish standpoint. So thank you, Varun. Okay, uh, that's the cue for me to invite uh, our panelists, starting with you, Tanya, first. Um, Tanya, tell me, and in fact, tell everyone about how was, you know, not particularly like, you know, the moment when you realized, but when you had your first periods, was there anyone that told you about what was going, you know, what was going on with you? Did you did you have a conversation with somebody in your family? Or I'm assuming like most of the girls you had to maybe ask somebody, you know, in school about, you know, what was really going through. So how was it like for you, Tanya? Uh, thank you, Mark. Thanks, everyone, for having me here. But yeah, that is a, a good question. Uh, I would like to take you back when I was in class seven, and that was my summer vacation. So I, we kids usually play a lot, get hurt and everything. So I was sitting idle, went to the washroom, came out, and I was shouting, Mama, 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 I, I was shouting, I got hurt, I got hurt. I, my brother also came, he, we both started shouting together, Mama, 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 we got, uh, Didi got hurt, Didi got hurt. And uh, Mama came back. She knew what what we were talking about. Uh, she came to me. She took me to the uh, to another room and asked my brother to stay out. That was one thing that was very weird to me because so far my parents never differentiated between a boy a girl. We never had separate conversations. We had a very uh, dining table conversation, living room conversations, but we never had this separate conversation. I was crying. I, I thought I got hurt myself. I, I, I wasn't able to see where that stain of blood was coming. In a way, was all red. I didn't have any idea. And I was continuously crying. But my mother made me sit and consoled me. Beta, it happens. It happens to every girl. It's, it's a part and parcel of your life now. But I was just in seventh. I didn't realize what she's, uh, she was saying. I was just crying. I just kept on crying. And I was like, in Hindi, I would say, I would say, I was a mama, I was like, and I was cursing myself that something is wrong with me. And I was not able to grasp this idea that every woman goes or every girl goes through this process. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have this idea. And I tried after, okay, by crying and everything. My father came in in the evening. I, I didn't know that this is a termed as taboo and we are not allowed to openly talk about it. My father came with Papa, Papa and I just just said out loud to him that, okay, aise, aise hai mere but still my mother took me, okay, beta, this is something you should not talk very openly about and everything. And those entire, that entire week, I was very much sad, in, I would say depressed. And I was not able to process what's going in my life and what's happening. So that would, I would say, my, uh, the, I, this was that was not a Google era. We didn't have Google handy. So we had our mothers or, uh, as you said, school uh, friends uh, that would have said that. But yep. that was very, very, I would say, scary moment of my life when I realized, okay, this happens to everyone. But yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tana. In fact, listening to you, I think you were speaking on behalf, um, you know, of a lot of women, of a lot of girls who probably go through that. Um, we're now living in an age where, you know, it's it's easier to understand through uh, a chat GPT or, or a Google, like you said. But back then, you just had no idea. And I can only imagine, you know, the reaction when, you know, your, your brother is told to move out of the room because this is a girl's talk. And it's not supposed to be. It's a talk which is supposed to be, you know, visible to everyone, right? Because tomorrow he'll he'll go and become a parent, you know. So, um, but thank you, thank you for sharing that, Tanya. We really appreciate it. That also gives me and kind of brings me to a important point. I want to start from you know where Tanya kind of left, which is your first years, which are your formative years. If you have somebody as a mentor or maybe as a guardian angel or parent, you know, in a lot of cases, who can explain to you a, more about periods and menstruation. Um, how important is that, right, when you when you understand it at a very fundamental level? So Mukta, if I can, if, if I can ask you that question, uh, 
particularly for you, how was this experience, this journey um, through school when you look at it? Did you have like, um, <clears throat> some, like a teacher or in school, was this a topic that was taught to you, talk to you and, your, and, your, and your friends that, you know what, menstrual hygiene is something that, that is very important? Yeah, 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 Mayank. Um, forget about menstrual hygiene. I mean, that comes much later. I mean, the very first time I heard of something like this, it was from a friend of mine because she got it like two, just two months before me. And I yeah. came home and asked my mother and uh, she was almost in denial that, okay, now already the time has come to have this talk. Now the talk was also centered around that this is something that now is going to happen to you for the rest of your life and it is going to happen uh, every month and these are the things you should do. But why is this happening? What are the, you know, uh, physical and mental effects? You know, how do I manage it? To a certain extent that talk was had, like how do I manage it better? But like, why is this happening? And uh, you know, <clears throat> how, I mean, hygiene comes, uh, not much later, but still before, you know, hygiene is the managing part. But yeah. uh, before that, a child needs to have those questions answered that, okay, why as a girl child, I am having it and, you know, no one else, like say the boy child is not having it. Uh, so things like that was totally absent. As Tanya said, there was no Google, there was no chat GPT. So, you know, it had become a, uh, you know, recess discussion among girlfriends in the school. And whatever little bits of information each person got, say someone read a book, someone's mother said something, someone's senior said something. And it's like, it was like comparing notes. But that should not be the way because those are half-baked information, myths that are, a lot of things are coming in, right? And those are very half-baked ways of, giving knowledge to a child about such an important part of her life. So definitely that thing was missing, at least in our times, I don't know how it is now, where, you know, there's a person who comes and talks and answers every question and, you know, tells, okay, this is what you can expect. This is why you are going through this. Uh, related to this, you know, this is how, uh, you know, more things can happen to your body or like, you know, your... Right mood swings and everything like that there's absolutely there was no one who uh, would talk about it and we discovered it as uh, you know we grew older kind of understood um you know mukta from your narrative i think you know like with tanya's um, experience so many women can draw parallels from 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 just uh, you know what you went through and i think the biggest takeaway that that i am um absorbing is uh, communication there is or there needs to be somebody now whether that's your teacher whether a friend but you know it will be an ideal world if it's your parent at the end of it because why don't why do you have to look for inspiration outside when the parents you know could, could become more sensitive uh, at that stage so I think that biggest takeaway for me hearing you is is communication having um, you know that that conversation which needs to happen sooner so thank you so much, Mukta, uh, for sharing uh, your journey with us. Communication takes me um, to, to something which I think sets the foundation uh, for everything. Because at the center of whatever we, we're having, like this is a talk show, but the theme at the center of it is conversations, is setting that line you know, between what is good and what is bad. Um, like you know, we discussed some time back, uh, periods is not a taboo, but it is a taboo to to ignore periods. Um, and let me let me put let me in fact put Chetra on the spot here. Uh, Chetra, you have a you have a five year old daughter uh, who in some years would um, you know would be would be having a first periods. How are you particularly you know uh, looking at uh, having a conversation with her and uh, you know what's a safe menstrual cycle if you know if you want to kind of tell her like do you want to tell her in a conversation? Or what is you and you know, your strategy particularly? Right. Um, uh, thanks, Maya, for this opportunity again. Um, before I share how I've been doing it, I would like to go back and share my experience. Uh, the time I got my first periods, um, I don't, I, I don't remember at all. My mother explaining how, uh, you know, how how I should be mentally prepared or physically be prepared for it. You know. Uh, my one and a half year old elder sister kind of 
uh, she had her first menstrual cycle and that's all i could see i could see that she was put in a room she was not allowed to come out there were relatives at home who kind of did all the uh, ceremony that she has become and that was a thing that you know suddenly she has become old she has gro- grown old that that's something that came up all of us are and how can someone get older right after menstrual cycle lot many questions around that um like all i could learn from her is that you know menstrual cycle will happen to you as well you will also bleed from there and you know it happens when the age gap is little less with your sister you get to hear such things from them which is more scaring right you will bleed for 5 to 7 days and down from there it can be painful it can you know all that you have all i was taught was how to use sanitary pad that was the major thing that was the only thing that was taught to me and as a child like tanya and uh, mukta mentioned we had to we used to have this discussion with friends and with no google i was all over the place thinking you know uh, one of i i still remember one of my friend who passed away who was diabetic and she passed away and the rumor was she passed away due to heavy blood flow so many things started we we saw someone dying and then so excessive bleeding can kind of you know take your life off so these many things you know it started uh, get i started getting anxiety triggers i still have anxiety triggers due to these uh, whenever i have my menstrual cycle the first two days are extremely painful i used to not know if i would pass away one day because of this extreme pain i still take my uh, uh, tablets due to excessive pain so i wish i could have this conversation with my mother my sister openly if they would have explained me way earlier that these are normal things how you could relieve your pain how you could you know uh, control these things these conversations are must to have so keeping this in mind i have made sure that i start this in a early age she is just 5 and a half 6 now i've made sure that my daughter knows how much she should know so baby steps that i've taken is you know share how i feel during these times i've shared with her uh, that we menstruate we bleed during these times initially when i used to pick sanitary pad she used to laugh because she just came out of a diaper <laughs> so she used to laugh at you know me wearing a sanitary pad so now i can see that i can pick sanitary pad from the uh, stationery uh, you know or the uh, supermarket right in front of her and she doesn't laugh so that is the education that i want uh, each of the new new moms to be prepared of to share this information with the young children i'm not uh, you know uh limiting the information to a girl child i want this to be shared with the boy children as well because i want even the boy child to be sympathetic to their mothers sisters and it can be their fathers as well so everyone in the family should be equally sympathetic you know uh, made be considerate when it comes to household chores everyone should take the responsibility of giving some rest to the mother or the menstruating lady at home so i kind of wanted to share this part and and i've seen i've seen a lot of changes in my daughter after this has been happening so that was a little bit of what i wanted to share thank you <laughs> well, thank you and and kudos to you firstly for sharing this with us and the the community second being a fabulous parent because the legacy that you're setting uh chaitra you are a reflection and uh, you know your 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 daughter your kids would be looking at you and they'll be becoming the kind of parents that you are you know right now so i think that that part particularly needs to be highlighted that your actions today will ultimately you know be a benchmark or a replica of what your kids want to i really appreciate you coming out and sharing that um and i also think see particularly for me um i've i've done my education from an all boys school 
um, so I didn't know about you know periods or even what a pad bank is. You know, uh, are, are these things done in your like have they kept specific facilities or management in, in a girls' school like that? But when when I used to speak about this, maybe with with a with a you know group of friends, the awareness was so little. Like Chatra, you mentioned the reaction, the observations, right? There's there's absolutely zero sensitivity and knowledge. And when you told us about your travels of you know, being through pain. Now, I'm just thinking, firstly, being a woman is, is so difficult because you have to go through this cycle every month. And at that moment, the bare minimum that you'd expect from anybody is at least create a space to have a conversation. But if you just look at what's really happening, while we've, let's say, made some progress, there is a yardstick for, for progress. There's still so much to be done. But thank you, Chatra. Uh, it was very nice um, hearing you. Um, and your thoughts. Thank you. Okay, um, Radhika, uh, what I wanted to ask you particularly is uh, something on similar lines that I that I spoke with Chetra on. But let's go back again at a school level, at an education level. Um, is it important, from your perspective, to create that sense of awareness and education in girls? Forget girls, actually, in kids, right? Both you know, a daughter and a son at a, at a young age? Do you think that is particularly important? Uh, absolutely, Mayank. Uh, so I, I really think girls from a young, uh, educating girls and boys from a young age is crucial. It will not only help normalize the experience, there is also, uh, but also there's so much stigma associated around this topic. We need to keep them informed and aware and ask them to be compared compassionate and supportive during these times. Uh, understanding can also uh, promote bet better health practices and encourage open conversations with parents as well as peers or people around you. Plus, it lays the foundation for discussions about broader topics. Overall, early education fosters confidence and ensures that girls feel informed and supported during, during this natural phase of their life. Uh, also, I feel that the approach cannot be standard based on the individual yeah. development level. Education needs to be tailored and can start from basic to detailed. Uh, one also has to be extremely approachable so children feel comfortable to ask questions and clear their doubts. So I strongly feel that, yes, awareness and education for the girls and boys is equally important, Mag. Thank you, Radhika. What you told us is something which is so simple, but still not understood by, I think, 80-90% of us, if I can say that. Um, education, both from a male and a female perspective, is important. Like like we heard Chaitra and, you know, Tanya and Mukta come and tell us that reactions, observations, you know, your brother is being asked to go outside the room because you don't have to, you don't want to have a talk in front of him, right? Um, it's particularly important that we create that sense of conversation very early not just for a girl child, but also for a boy. And like we're having this uh, pro bono work that, that we're all a part of. And this is from my own confession. When we first got to know that there are all male members working towards uh, this particular project with, with Arun, we were very happy. And I'm not saying that all you know boys or all men um, are bad or they are all insensitive, but we all know that charity starts from home. If your mother, if your father, if your brother, your partner, and this is what an ideal world for me is. Imagine 2030 to be like all male members going to a shop to buy sanitary pads and napkins. The shopkeeper who's giving those pads to you is not giving you that in a black poly theme or discreetly like we so often see it. And that's the that's the ideal world that we're going for. But thank you. Thank you so much, Radhika. It was a pleasure to, to hear you. Um, Poonam, okay. This is something that I'm particularly interested in and I wanted to, you know, I've asked a lot of people around this. I've had Arun come and tell me stuff. I've, you know, spoken to a few of the uh, leaders who've, who've given me their sense. But from your vantage point, when you look at this situation from your childhood, hand to heart, Poonam, do you feel that society has, has become good in all of these years or it's actually you know, became bad or the situation has turned worse when you when you talk about mindsets, when you talk about having conversations, when you talk about the work that's being done. What do you particularly think, Puna? Yeah, sure. 
I would uh, definitely uh, say it hasn't gone worse. Um, I can give a, a comparison because I have my own daughter who is uh, just 12 and uh, she's just had her uh, first period. So I have a first hand uh, you know, comparison to do from the time when I got it when I was in uh, class seven and I didn't even know something like this was going to happen to me and only got to know about this once I had it and once mom discovered and then she told me I wasn't even aware that something was happening uh, in me was happening with me and mom discovered and then uh, you know we had a we didn't really have a conversation but she just told me that this is normal for every female to have versus today's experience where I had made my daughter aware of this she also got, you know, uh, these things are being spoken about by kids at school also. I think from class six, a few of the kids start having it early. And so that is how they get to know about it. So in terms of awareness, I would say there's definitely been a change for the good. And uh, in terms of attitude um, or the the ecosystem, I would say even there, there has been a positive change. Like if I go to my uh, school days, there was no provision for a sanitary pad at school versus today where, uh, you know, the girl child, if required, she can go to the medical room and ask for one at her school. So the provision is there. And same is with, I would say, with the workplace also, we do have provision for this. And there is a separate, uh, you know, facility to dispose it off correctly and in the right. right way. So definitely in terms of infrastructure and ecosystem also, there has been a positive change. And uh, in terms of attitude of the people around, I would say there has never been a time when I have had any conversation around this with my father or with my brother. But, uh, and also if I go back to the ads that we uh, used to see yes. when we were uh, young, right? There would be a lady who would be the yeah. only one in the ad and she would be speaking in a very whispering tone versus yeah. today when um, there's a stay free is also having a campaign it's just yeah. a paid campaign where you know the father and the daughter are having a conversation about this and the father is yeah. trying to introduce this subject to his daughter right yeah. so when in terms of uh, the attitude and the society there has definitely been a leap of change but then yeah. uh, I wouldn't say that this has become as normal as uh, having food uh, in a restaurant, you know, where you just go and it is, it hasn't become a normal thing where right. like, uh, mine just mentioned we, when we go to buy sanitary pads, we are still given in a, you know, a black paper or in a newspaper, but yeah. There has been a change. I would also like to uh, just uh, bring to light this instance where I know that in colleges, uh, you know, men are also using uh, these simulators uh, to just go through the kind of pain that women go through yeah. when they have their periods. So this shows that the men are also, you know, uh, they are thinking or trying to feel about it. But there is still a long way for us to go before it becomes normal, I think. Very, very well summarized and very well um, uh, spoken, Poonam. Um, I remember, um, and this is not particularly, you know, a fault of, um, I'm not, not, not sure how to say it, of a generational fault, but we've all been, and if I can, I, I can say on behalf of all of us, baby, we've all been in those rooms where we're watching a commercial, there's a stay free ad, and maybe it's in the next three, four seconds, you know, your father would tell you to change the channel. Right, because it's now become tense in the room. Or maybe you're watching um, a movie, let's say, or a TV show, where now this is not an advertisement. This is proper three, four minutes of those conversations where you're running from. And we've all seen the reactions, right? Like around us, things have changed. Like it's a very big thing, right? And we're not having a conversation like that. So, Puna, thank you. Uh, you know, again, like I've heard so, so, so many of you today. Uh, so so many parallels, so many women who will who will hear you and say that hey, this is also what we've we've been been through. So thank you, thank you for sharing that uh, with us, Poonam. We appreciate it. Um, okay, well, we've heard uh, you know all our women panelists 
and a very uh, different perspective. Uh, but the common theme, I think, remains conversations, communication, observations, sensitivity towards this issue. I'd now like to invite um, Rohan and Abhishek, who I've also had the privilege of working on these projects, and I've seen them um, and just hear you know, their ideas. But maybe, Rohan, I could start to, with you first. Um, and Abhishek, you can then chime in with your inputs. From a male perspective, from a male point of view, uh, Rohan, and you're a parent as well. What do you think needs to change? So thanks, man. So I think I was I was telling my daughter, I have a teenage daughter, and I was telling her yesterday that you know I'm going to be part of this talk show. And the first thing that she tells me, yeah, please go and tell them it's okay to walk up to a salon, you know, while you are on your periods or you know how you have to live with it forever. Obviously, in humor, I'm not the villain here, but you know, mm -hmm. she it's it's like you know i and then i was thinking and i was like i'm going to tell that really i'm going to mention that the way you mentioned it right and then she was like yeah so it's like you know and i started thinking subconsciously we don't realize what we are doing right and i don't think so we can empathize enough and you know since childhood i have been growing around women sister mother wife daughter so, so I kind of understand and, and I've kind of grown uh, with things and, you know, my knowledge has also increased with that. But I do feel that, you know, we can never, ever empathize, right? Because we don't feel it in the same way. And I know, you know, Poonam mentioned about simulator. If my daughter gets to know, she is going to send me tomorrow to that. And she's like, please feel that, right? And then you will know and then you will not tell me that how i have to live with it forever right but but i think you know and and when when i'm with friends and you know one thing that i feel a little sad about and when i say empathy is you know like in your normal conversation subconsciously or consciously you try and make that situation in a very taunting manner like for example yeah. if someone is in a bad mood right someone is angry in in a group of boys they would say, oh, you know, it's a period children, right? Not realizing what that actually means, right? And then I, 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 maybe, you know, in the last one year, maybe I've heard that at least three, four times in my group, right? And at that time, obviously, I don't react or anything. But then, you know, I think afterwards that how easy it is for us to say that, right? Because we have never felt that. We don't know what it takes. We don't know the pain anything of that sort so i think that awareness is there right i have friends who have daughters they also are aware and you know they also empathize but then people who don't have daughters they don't empathize right uh, uh people especially who are staying with parents i think and i'm talking about guys right so it's still a taboo like you know my mother would tell my daughter don't talk in front of them right and then, you know, she would come to me and then she would be like, you know, initial it was, it used to be like, you know, why is she saying that, right? And I used to try and explain to her, you know, what the situation was before, what the situation is now. These days, it's like, you know, she would go and she would be like, you know, let's go, let's go, let's talk in front of her. Like, it's, it's more like that, right? Let's put her in an uncomfortable position. It's, it's more like that, right? And, and we kind of gang up on that. But... You know, that's because of the awareness that that I have got, right? That's because of the openness that is there. And and uh, but but I think a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't empathize uh, the simplest thing. Right. And then like I was just reading up on things and I know about hot flushes, for example, one of the days, one of the and, and this was probably the nearest that I felt. And there were, you know, I my empathy kind of grew some medicine that i took the side effect was hot flushes right and right. that time i was like now i know what a woman would be going through right and that's why i said you know when i heard about simulator i was like a little scared but uh yeah i i think more and more awareness uh, i think it's still a taboo okay uh subconsciously we say a lot of things without even realizing what it means right uh, people never understand mood swings. I till today don't understand mood swings. 
right i don't know why there are mood swings because i have not felt it myself right yeah. i know okay i empathize i know and i would do whatever possible to make the other person comfortable but today i don't understand mood swings i am like why like what really happens right and and again there's a joke that happens in in the boys group saying that uske to din chal rahe hai so you know that that sort of a thing and i think that we need to come over it will take time it is going to take years and years but but yeah that's what i would i would want want to say thank you rohan um, you've played a brilliant point um, which is so we're all speaking about communication we're all speaking about awareness but the fundamental the prerequisite to having that to having that mindset is empathy is being empathetic um, i love firstly how your how your uh, daughter told you about the um you know the 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 talk show and and all of that and she's i think clearly very mature um you know at her age and i think she also raised a very nice point that you know uh, you know what when these are simulators are there it's actually uh, i think arun can come in and tell us that a bit later but there are companies now there are events that happen where you know males are put through that pain and that intensity of the pain can be adjusted and in one of the things i was actually i was looking at this one of one of the videos on youtube where maybe the intensity is 100 of that particular simulator and the guy who's testing it couldn't go above 15 above 15 and 100 is the level so you know once you're in that position you'll understand that it isn't easy so thank you rohan uh, for sharing you you've shared a lot of things about pre and post and i'm very happy that you know as a parent um you you creating that uh, that environment where your daughter and you know your partner could could have that conversation so thank you so much uh, ron sure. abhishek uh, same question what needs to change um, from from a from a male uh, you know point of view right uh, first of all thanks for having me in bank and uh so i i pretty much agree with rohan on like we are not able to understand right we cannot understand the emotions the hormonal changes and you know uh you know during that time and and i was just thinking that you know the biggest sin that you know we commit as a parent is avoiding confrontation with our children like right? and especially from male point of view uh, what i wanted to say is like let's say there's a curious uh, you know boy child you know he watches Uh, a commercial about sanitary pad he reaches out to father or maybe mother he will ask hey what is this i mean just hypothetically if you imagine that but we we never uh, i mean there's a general mentality that you know time ke sath sath sab cheez pata chal jayega right so there there's you know by time they will get to know but we don't understand the sources from where i mean if we avoid answering that question being open with our children probably that you know whatever things rohan mentioned that will happen they'll make jokes about it they will not understand the pain through which you know uh, this uh, girl child goes uh, during the, those days so i think the need of the hour right now is to be more friendly with our children be more like uh, open i mean in terms of even if it's like boy child let them know that you know this is what it is and you know uh, just just give him complete knowledge rather than just leaving it and saying that you know his samay ke sath sab चीज चले सो वी जस्ट टेंड टू से दैट इट्स दिस इज ऑल लाइक एडल्ट टॉक एंड वी अवॉइड कन्फ्रंटेशन सो दिस इज समथिंग वी हैव टू रियली एज अ सोसाइटी ग्रो अप एंड यू नो हैव ओपन कन्वर्सेशन विद आवर चिल्ड्रन बी इट गर्ल एंड द यू नो और और अ बॉय वी हैव टू बी ओपन विद देम द सेकंड थिंग इज लाइक व्हिच लाइक तानिया ऑलरेडी पार्शियली कवर्ड इज दैट व्हाई यू नो इन इन अ फैमिली uh you know girl will will be closer to a mother during this days like even when when she gets her first period she will go to mother and even the mother will have like a tendency okay theek hai she will not let her go to father directly and have an open conversation so that is something like a trend in the society so i mean like a uh, deep uh, rooted trend that you know everybody is following even in the urban areas so they are not letting the boy a beat brother or the father deal in those situation and kind of ek bol sakte hai ki ek ek like bad pratha hai ki we are not being open about that and not educating our boys as well so that uh, when they become father of you know girl child or, or when they marry they will take it like uh, they will understand their perspective well so yeah these are the things yeah. i wanted to highlight man loved it abhishek um samay ke sath 
पता लग जाएगा इज प्रॉबली द वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट रीजन वाई वी स्टिल वे वी आर बिकॉज वी गिड लीव एवरी थिंग टू टाइम वी लीव एवरी थिंग टू टू सिचुएशन और सर्कमस्टांस इट्स फनी बिकॉज वी थिंक दैट इफ यू थ्रो इट टू टाइम और वी डीले इट magically people will understand things mm-hmm. you know they will arrive at a point where somebody will come and tell them about this but they don't want to take the ownership and that's where the problem is accountability Absolutely. ownership starts with you right you possibly thinking that you know what uh, let's get him or or let's get her married and after that they have their own world but what they're not thinking is and like i was telling you know some time back what you as a parent um, set as a legacy your kids are following that right and a lot of times in fact now in the world that we see we've now gone out of those shackles so maybe if our parents had a slightly different viewpoint or they weren't comfortable clearly when we're having a conversation like this we've decided that you know what maybe as parents or as our generations or the generations to come we won't let this stay the way it has because the way that we've got let's say um you know learnings from our generations if we leave it to as is like you mentioned if if we tell our kids that you know time ke sath you know you'll understand that's the first mistake that we do so thank you abhishek uh, very nice to to hear your journey and uh, appreciate you you taking out time and walking us through that thank you so much thank you um, before i i give it to arun for his closing comments i really appreciate that we if we've heard so many uh, perspectives so many viewpoints how everybody has has been kind and gracious enough to walk um, about him or her in terms of a journey you know how their first periods were challenges uh, what needs to change you know and how particularly you know our males doing or what 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 needs to change from their perspective just a bit about me um, i come from an army family uh, my mother raised me and my daughter as feminists now feminists there's a very big big misconception that feminist ka matlab hota hai that you put the the girl child ahead feminist is equal equality but that also means sensitivity so at a very early age i was taught by my mother about you know what 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 your sister is probably going through at this point and the that particular days don't dare to trouble her because i was a very naughty kid right so i would probably be doing all sorts of mischief but wo do ya char din dikh mat jaye and when an army woman tells you that you have to run for your life but my point is guys that at a very young age i understood that but maybe and i'm not saying this with any uh, you know pride or humility that there were very few people who been taught from from that age but i'm happy that because of our because of foundations like pinkish we are pushing the envelope we are having people talk about things that make them uncomfortable so all of that said um, you know conversations it starts with conversations it then leads to action which is you know what uh, was the inspiration behind arun starting pinkish eight years back um, arun i'll give it to you um, to summarize and to just share um, your experiences and um, you know what you felt of this uh talk show today thank you mank uh, and thank you everybody i have i've been listening very intently uh excellent of you to share your stories and there's so much to understand so much to learn what i would say is i think uh, what we're talking here today is is somewhere very very important uh look at the human history the time that the first woman was born she had her period and since then till date we have not been able to normalize periods which is a natural phenomenon imagine you're going from a driving a family is driving from bangalore to mysore together in a car you stop somewhere uh, at a restaurant or a dhaba to have something and all everybody will go and use the washrooms everybody knows where we are going right but if some woman is on her period she'll still kind of keep it secret though it's the same body part and everything and that's the situation now why we're talking about is because there are a lot of damages which are happening because of this uh in rural areas if we talk about the statistics tell us one in five girls one 
in five girls is taken out of school as soon as he she hits puberty right yeah. there were no washrooms uh, uh, in the schools parents were worried where will she change her uh, her, her pad uh, or a cloth piece because pads are still not kind of uh, used to and her chances uh, her opportunities her life is compromised at that stage itself right when pinky started we started working in the rural areas because we thought menstrual health and hygiene and conversation and the taboo is a problem of the rural india right at some point in time we realized probably not and we decided to do a dipstick check and we went to we did a very large survey in 1100 urban schools uh, uh of across 400 cities in india uh, to to see and that that we did couple of years back to see what kind of and we had some 30 questions or so how the status yeah. like and the status is pretty bad right still still we tell our daughters not before uh, uh, uh and we do not prepare them but when it happens then yes there is family and mothers and everybody around to kind of support her but the kind of initial trauma that she gets uh it is tremendous right uh, okay and it can happen in the school somebody believes uh, and there have been cases there have been wild wild cases though though just one in say a million but recently there's a there's a brother who murdered her her teenage sister when she got her period because she he thought there's something wrong there's some some something wrong with her character or she did something hanky panky and this happened in nagpur right uh, in this in this year itself right and that is what happens so the thing is uh, girls need to know it earlier before they get their period so that they are prepared there are signs that they get to know a mother can tell teach her daughter uh, when do you start getting your period and before that she need to at least start carrying a hygiene kit uh, know about it so that she takes it very easy the trauma is not there because the trauma otherwise stays for life right we we heard a lot of experiences i think that is important it is also very important to teach our boys uh, i remember when i used to see those ads uh, and and for two years i just kept on thinking what it is a uh, sudden yeah. a whisper ad would be there and there would be uh, some music and everything and you believe that it's a wonderful product i don't know what 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 it does it makes you free or something and one day with a lot of courage but there would be eerie silence in the room and one day i asked my mother and sisters and they looked at him at me like i'm prem topra or ranjit moved out of the room theek okay? and i felt very bad you won't believe it's only after my marriage i realized what period are and when i when i knew knew about it i felt victim i believe our boys are victim of the system that we do not trust them we do not entrust them with the right information at the right time and if you don't do that fir to whatever rohan said wo wahi baat karenge na because that is what they'll hear from their friends ki lal bahadur shastri aa gaye ya something has happened and they have their own slang and you know how boys are right but the thing yeah. is the fact that matter is who is responsible the society is responsible so if we want our men our boys to become gentlemen right take care of and understand women uh, i think i think we need to teach them uh, third point i would also bring to uh, 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 the four here is see we we more and more women are joining workforces right and and the offices the manufacturing industries the corporate they have been running things the way they have been there have been talks about a period leave about conversation about sensitizing the managers and there have been some some companies have started very early adopters have started adopting doing something about it but mostly the 99% of the corporate world is still kind of giving a close eye to it shoving it on the side right but the fact of the matter is we want more as a nation we want more and more women to join our workforce uh, and and everybody does not get a corporate office everybody does not get an opportunity to work from home there are girls in swiggy who are traveling everywhere right uh, and they also they also get periods they also have to change their pads they also have to take care of themselves and the period policies in organization is also a very urgent need uh, yeah. uh 
whatever the companies adopt, whatever whatever it kind of suits them, and it can be slowly and steadily. But it's a very important topic to be adopted because that's how we'll be able to. So so when we're talking of gender equality, when we're talking of giving equal opportunity. Uh, uh, in 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 a corporate world which is primarily male dominated and the boardrooms we still have just one women in a board of 20 right uh, we need to be mindful of that and i believe we the corporates should also start adopting a period policy whatever that suits them and i think today's discussion uh, uh, with uh, people from Adobe is a fantastic, fantastic uh, 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 first step in that direction. Uh, totally appreciate that. Thank you again, uh, all, all, all of you. And I think uh, one last point that I'll <laughs> make, uh, leave you guys with. A lot of women, even urban, that's what we find from research and our data and working in urban areas, with schools, in rural areas, is that today's mothers however so they are and yes they 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 might know when to talk or they they know that i need to kind of tell my daughter at the right time but what to tell how to tell when to tell is still a question and a lot of mothers struggle with that uh, a few years back we were the median age of getting the first period was around 12 now girls as young as 8 are getting it because of the lifestyle changes and our food there are there are the serious problems like PCOD and PCOS, which are which, which the young girls are struggling with. So it's yeah. very important uh, uh, to, to understand that. And, the, and, and what I would say from a Pinkish Foundation perspective is, if there are mothers who really are, are 100, not 100% sure that they know what all to tell, the physiology of the body, the changes that happens, the physical changes, the mental changes, uh, how to how to kind of use a pad for the first time. Because a lot of times I see mothers just give them a pad and they say, go and use it. And a girl would not even know how to use it, right? And, and she'll struggle inside, right? Pinkish Foundation does all that. And we, we, we do it. We are very happy to do it completely free of charge. Uh, if there are mothers who would want uh, <laughs> kind of given education sessions to their daughters, uh, please come to us. Uh, you are most welcome. You can come yourself uh, with your husband. We do it in online group settings. It does not cost anybody anything except for some wonderful, wonderful opportunity to learn. Uh, and, and that's an invitation which through this program I like to give the rest of the India. Uh, please come to Pinkish Foundation and we'll be very happy to kind of uh, hold hand of your girl. And, and you love those sessions. And, and, and all we ask in return is when you learn it, uh, how to talk, what to talk, when to talk, please help somebody else also. And I think that way it can be a huge movement. Uh, and we all can, uh, another, as Mayank said, in another few years, uh, everybody. Uh, period is a talk which anybody can do anytime. Absolutely. Wonderful, Arun. Thank you so much to uh, you know, like in, in what you just said and so much to take back as an inspiration. But I loved it, uh, particularly when you said that the what, the how, the when, that's 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 it. You know, you, you, you've informed somebody about that. We'll, we'll have probably less awkward conversations and less um, silences. But thank you so much, Arun, and thank you um, to everyone. Tanya, Abhishek, Chaitra, Rohan, Radhika, Poonam, Mukta. Um, this is a this is a step. This is not just individuals coming together, having a conversation. This is individuals coming together who care about society, who care about community building, and who are uh, parents, and you know who would be parents someday. Um, and it all starts with us. So uh, thank you, everyone, and Arun, a big thank you to you uh, for being uh, such a you know good part of the entire conversation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Mike, for hosting this. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Arun.